Let's do a few very simple examples of calculating and adding up the present values of the expenses and revenue of a project using a spreadsheet. As a first example, let's assume we have a project that lasts 10 years. The project has an expense of $10,000 at the beginning and revenue of $12,000 at the end of 10 years. We'll put the year in this column. We'll start at zero. and go up to 10. We'll put the expenses in this column. And we'll assume no expenses for the rest of the project. We'll put the revenue in this column. In this case, the only revenue is $12,000 at the end of the project. So our cash flow will be our revenue minus expenses. We can copy this down like this. We'll assume a discount rate of 4% every year. And we'll assume that this is the same discount rate for expenses and for revenue and unchanged throughout the project. So we can calculate a discount factor which is 1 at the beginning of the project and subsequently is equal to the previous discount factor divided by 1 plus the discount rate. And we see how this discount factor changes throughout the project. Now we can calculate the present value of the cash flow as equal to the actual cash flow times the discount factor. And we'll copy this value down to the end of the project. Now we can calculate what I call the cumulative present value. And that starts with the present value at the beginning of the project. And then in every subsequent year, it's equal to the previous sum of present values plus the current present value of the cash flow. And we can copy this down to the end of the project. The cumulative present value at the end of the project is called the net present value. And this is the value that is used to determine whether the project is a good investment or not. In this case, we see that the net present value is negative, so this is not considered to be a good investment, even though it brings in $12,000 at the end of the project for the $10,000 we invested at the beginning. It simply is not considered to be a good investment, given the 4% discount rate. Now, if we switch to a 3% discount rate for the entire project, and again for both expenses and revenue, we see that the losses go down. This is considered to be a loss because it's negative, but it's still a negative value, so this is still not considered to be a good investment at a discount rate of 3%. If we reduce the discount rate all the way to 1%, then we would see that we have a positive net present value, so with this discount rate, the investment is considered to be a good investment or profit-making investment. Now let's go back to a discount rate of 4%. But now, instead of getting $12,000 in revenue at the end of the project, let's see what happens if we get $1,000 every year throughout the project. And to balance things out, we'll extend the project out to 12 years, so our actual income is the same amount, $12,000, and now this is the net present value. We see it's still negative, so this is not considered to be a good investment even with the $1,000 a year coming in for 12 years, but it's not as negative as it was before. We can see what happens if we change this discount rate to 3%. Now the investment still is not considered to be good, but we've only viewed this as a loss of $46. But if we make the discount rate 1%, Then again, the 
net present value is positive, and this investment is considered to be a good investment. Let's go back to a discount rate of 4%, and let's extend our project now to 15 years. Our net present value is now positive, even with a discount rate of 4%. We see we have this $1,118 positive net present value. So in this case, it is considered to be a good investment. But this requires bringing in revenue of $1,000 a year for 15 years based on our initial investment of $10,000. Let's see what happens if we increase the discount rate all the way to 6% throughout the project. Now let's see what happens if we have a particularly good year in year 12 and we bring in $1,500 that year. Unfortunately, our net present value is still negative, although it's only a very small negative amount, probably within the accuracy of this calculation. But with a negative net present value, we still would say that this is not a particularly good investment. However, suppose if our good year occurs instead of in year 12, it occurs in the first year. Now by having our revenue of $1,500 in the first year instead of the 12th year, we do change this to a positive net present value. The reason for that is getting the extra $500 of revenue in the first year is worth a lot more than getting the extra $500 of revenue not until the 12th year. Let's try a different example now in which we do our calculations on a month by month instead of a year by year basis. So let's call this month. We'll also calculate year over here. We'll start at the beginning. And we'll call this year one. start calling it year two in uh, month 13. And we'll extend this all the way down to the end of 10 years. Let's assume we have a revenue of $100 per month, which would be $1,200 per year. And we can copy this all the way down to the end of the project. We'll also assume a discount rate of half a percent per month, which is the equivalent of 6% per year, put 0.5%, although now it's accumulated monthly. And our net present value is our cumulative present value at the end, which is in this case negative. So with our $10,000 investment at the beginning of the project and bringing in $100 a month or $1,200 a year for 10 years, we see that we still have not made this into a good investment, even though the actual money we bring in will be $12,000 by the end of the project. But now suppose our discount rate is only 3% a year. The equivalent of that is point to 5% per month, and we can copy this down to the end of the project, and we see the cumulative present value does become positive sometime in the 10th year of the project. At that point, we can say the investment has paid for itself, and it becomes a profitable investment if the revenue continues up through 10 years. And of course, if the revenue continues beyond 10 years, we can see th that the cumulative present value continues to be larger, so whenever the project ends, we will have a positive net present value. But it took 10 years for this investment to begin to pay off. If we go back to the beginning, however, suppose we have a little bit more revenue. Suppose we have $120 per month. We can copy this down to the end of the project. In this case, the cumulative present value has become positive sometime in the eighth year of the project, and that's when the investment has paid for itself, and the project begins to become a uh, worthwhile investment.
So we see that the net present value of a project depends on the expenses and the revenue and the discount rate, and also when the expenses and revenue take place during the project. Things that happen sooner are of greater value or have a bigger influence on the cumulative present value and the net present value than things that happen later on in the project. And we can also see by when the cumulative present value becomes positive, the point at which an investment is said to have paid for itself and becomes a worthwhile investment.